Check out my brand new sample and preset pack, Nitric Performance Enhancing Drums, by using the links below. Flume's songs are mystifying. You never know what a release is going to sound like before you listen to it. So if we're going to make a song like Flume, we have to go in with a abnormal approach. And for me, it's important to always have new textures and new sounds because everyone has the same gear. But it's all about using the gear in the way it's not supposed to be used. Everyone has the same gear. It's all about how you actually use it. That is exactly what I had in mind for this song. And before I start, I do want to say that all of the sounds in this song are available below for free in a flume style kit, which all of these sounds are made up of nitric. But some of these sounds are heavily processed, so I made sure to put the processed ones in there and also the unprocessed as well. So I started this at 150 BPMs and I got the beat going with just a snare and a hi-hat. And literally the first thing I did was I went to the RM section in the pre-computed effects in FL Studio. And I did that with the snare, which I would never normally do. But I, like I said, we were going for weird sounds and this is a great way to get something to sound really different. And then every other snare, I have this whistly type of snare in there. So I found a nice roomy and airy kick from my trick. And then I laid down a kick pattern. And then next, I wanted to lay some synths down, but I knew there was gonna be a lot of work to do after this, but I just wanted to get a general bass down and then we can worry about doing weird stuff later. You really just have to trust in the process if we're gonna be completely honest. So I took a vital pad preset for the chords. And for the bass, I wanted something wide and gritty. And it sounds like Flume uses a lot of 808s as well. So this is acting as the sub bass, but also giving us some high end too. And the chord progression for this song is just two chords. I did the major one and the minor six in the G sharp major scale. Threw that down on the beat, side chained it with Fruity Limiter, and already it kind of sounds pretty decent. And then at this point, I knew that was too simple, too straightforward at least. And this is where the creative process took off. So Shaper Box, this is my go-to for making things sound really, really weird. So I started with these two and I automated the mix of both of these. So sometimes the first one's playing and sometimes the second one's playing. But I realized that I wanted full control. And when you have weird things going on like this, it's hard to tell exactly what it's doing. So I decided to bounce the bass to audio and then bounce the chords to audio as well. And that just gives you full control of everything. And it makes the creative process a lot easier in my opinion. So I did chop it up a little bit here. And I also automated the pitch of the bass a little bit to make it slide. So we're getting somewhere now. It's somewhere in the middle of the, the flume weird meter. But at this point, it was sounding more of like an A, B drop. So part A, part B, part A, part B. And I'm a big fan of doing that because it just keeps the drop interesting. You obviously can't do it for every single song, but when I see the opportunity to do so, I definitely do it. So since we have those two sections, I generally like to have a different top lead sound for each one. So I just grabbed a synth shot right out of Nitric, pitched it a little bit, and then I threw that into the main synth bus. And already it was kind of giving us this cool, mysterious lead sound. Part B, I wanted to make it a little more melodic. I went for a couple leads from Nitric, and these have these nice distorted crunchiness to it. Add in some effects, a big room reverb. And also back to the drums, I chopped up a few loops, manipulated them a little bit as we've been doing the whole time here, and threw them in for a bit of ear candy. A few other little tiny effects here and there. And slowly but surely, 
we're almost getting there however we must build out a verse and build up for this drop but i also had something else in mind too which i'll touch on in just a little bit so i took the synth preset flume from famous and then i made this pretty much the epicenter of the break chords And then I automated some of the macros, bounced it to audio, and then that was set. To make things sparkle a little bit, I added in these atmospheric layers, and these are my absolute favorite things to add in the songs. They're not the epicenter of your song, but I think they add so much texture, whether it be tonally or vinyl and things like that. A vocal shot for some more atmosphere. Violin repeating the B phrase of the drop melody. And this makes it a little more familiar when the drop comes in. And I unfortunately won't be able to explain every single detail here because that would take a very long time because there's just a bunch of small like little things here and there. But I hope you guys are catching on to the theme and process of this, which is really to just do anything. And then at this point, I had one more thing to do, make an entire new drop. And then I just kept on going with that no rules concept. I automated the tempo down from 150 to 130 in that little build transition to the next drop. It's more of an outro type of drop. It's not like a big drop. I pretty much used the same elements in the B part. And then I really just made more of a variation of that B drop. And now it's time for few last minute details. A pitch shifter on the B part of the drop on the chords. And this gives the chords a granular sound, which I think it went a really long way here just to mix it in and make it a little bit different from the A part. The fill was really weird. I took this underwater sample and then I just manipulated it like crazy. And once again, it ended up having this granular, really messed up audio type of sound, but I think it works. And like I said, I did balance a lot of these out to audio. So anything that was processed really weirdly, I did put it to audio so you guys can just grab it right out of the folder and it's ready to go. And then I chopped up one of the variations of the lead. I call this technique recycling things. So. This wasn't an on purpose thing, but I felt I could use that as an ARP or just use that in a certain part of the song. I'm recycling the things that are already in my song, which glue your song together. It was an unintentional thing to actually make it, but it ended up sounding pretty cool. So ladies and gentlemen, here's the full playthrough.